Oseo. Oseo. Oh, great. That's a Cherokee greeting. And wave the great feather for the good of it. Hey, today is Father's Day, and I'm celebrating a special father, the gay father of the beat poets. Do you know who that is? Alan Ginsburg. Ginsburg. There you go, like that. And he is also a June birthday child. Yeah. June 3rd was his birthday. He's the son of Naomi. I like that. My first girlfriend's name was Naomi. Naomi and Louis Ginsburg. Uh, Ferlinghetti says he was a, also a poet and a, and a writer there. Uh, all this begins, actually, uh, there in San Francisco, 1955. Uh, Kenneth Rex Roth, he was, uh, I'd call, the color, cultural giant of San Francisco. He had a repertory theater there, Vivian, her friend Vivian, she was an actress there in his repertory theater. And he arranged uh, to have a poetry event at the Sixth Gallery down on Fillmore Street. I'll say down, Fillmore comes from the south to the north. And it goes by Japantown, and it goes up at the link climb. It comes down really, really steep to Union Street, then kind of levels out into a little slope down there. And that's where the Sixth Gallery was. <laughs> it was like a primitive art gallery, that kind of thing. Uh, I visit there some of the years later in the little stage, much like this one here, where Jack Kerouac had sat, uh, was still there. <laughs> so. That's the, the main poets that were here, was Jack Kerouac and Michael McClure, I was a student of Michael's, and uh, Gary Snyder and uh, Philip Whalen. Philip Whalen helped me on my uh, Siddhartha poem. Uh, and Pearl Getty was there, you know, not as a poet, he is a poet, but he was there as the publisher, editor, founder of the City Lights bookstore over in North Beach, you know. But famously was Allen Ginsberg and he upstaged everybody. Uh, somehow, I guess, uh, Rexworth had some flyers made uh, for this event, and uh, my teacher, uh, Michael McClure, said, um, Gary Snyder had one of those, and he said, you better keep it, because this is going to be a historical event. So Gary was some kind of a prophet there, <laughs> uh, like that. Uh, the poem that uh, debuted there of Ginsburg's was How. And uh, right away, uh, Berlin Getty, you know, signed, signed him up, you know, to to publish his you know, poem. And here, probably a, a replica. Uh, it, it, it says in the beginning that th this has had uh, one 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 million uh, one hundred and ten thousand copies, nineteen fifty nineteen fifty nine. Uh, Allen Ginsberg's Howl and Other Poems was originally published by City Lights Books in the fall of 1956. Subsequently, was seized by U.S. Customs and the San Francisco Police. It was the subject of a long court trial where a series of poets and professors all persuaded the court that the book was not obscene. They made a really good movie of this trial, all actors, but they are at the end, the judge's verdict was, this is art. No poet writing in a free country should bother himself about the uh, sensuousness and the sensual. There are some gentle souls, however, who proclaim that how is meaningless because it did not teach them anything. <clears throat> well, Ginsburg's how does not have a moral toe. His heart is all he knows. And so uh, I had a recording. I got uh, somebody put me on to a fellow in Berkeley that uh, made a, a compact uh, disc of his. Recording. I don't think it was the live one, but it has like a reverb in it. And if that <laughs> sounded anything like it sounded like in the Sixth Gallery, the Sixth Gallery was you know not much bigger than this space here, pretty pretty similar, with a little stage here like that. 
uh, but it had, had such a uh, such an impact. Uh, and I do want to have a little bit the the um, introduction here is by William Carlos Williams, <laughs> and this is just excerpt. It is a howl of defeat, not defeat at all, for he has gone through defeat as if it was an ordinary experience. Everyone in this life is defeated, but a man, if he be a man, is not defeated. It is the poet Ginsberg who has gone through horrifying experiences. The wonder of the thing is not that he has survived, but that he, from the very depths, has found a fellow whom he can love. A love he celebrates without looking aside in these poems. Say what you will, he proves to us, in spite of the most debasing experiences that a life can offer a man, the spirit of love survives to ennoble our lives if we have the wit and the courage and the faith and the art to persist. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I never, never was in the presence of Ginsburg in, in person, but uh, Tim and David were, spent some time, and David took a Polaroid snapshot of, of him. He took the, he took the snapshot <laughs> of him. It was a Polaroid. Tim gave me uh, that picture. He's sitting by the window. Uh, I had it on my wall. It was a Polaroid, so he, after a while it did fade away. You know, but I was glad to have him there like that. <clears throat> uh, in the opening line of how how is for Carl uh, Solomon and uh, Fernand Getty, you know, who public, published this, uh, he, he said that the name Howell has come from uh, some piece in Jack Kerouac. Uh, this is just the opening lines. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the negro streets at dawn, looking for an angry fix. Now the last, the last line is the, actually the, the last letter, about eight, 18 lines, you know, the last of 18 lines is all for uh, Carl Solomon. So it's the last one. I'm with you in Rockland. In my dreams you walk dripping from a sea journey on the highway across America in tears to the door of my cottage in the western night. It's so beautiful. And uh, th this, you know, he spent this in, in uh, 1955. When Ferlinghetti said he wanted to publish it, he did say he made a few changes uh, there. Uh, and there's just one place, you know, where Ferlinghetti has, you know, uh, crossed out whatever the offending word was. <laughs> um, a, a hard to see that how that this poem in any way is obscene. Probably what really got the authorities, in my opinion, was Moloch. That Ginsburg so wonderfully equates Moloch with corporate America. Who is Moloch? He was the ancient god of child sacrifice. It seemed like an all consuming sacrificial God. And uh, so he, he did do a, a footnote to Howe also. He has 1955. And uh, the last line of that, holy, the supernatural, extra brilliant, intelligent kindness of the soul. He knows only his heart. Uh, what, I, what I have with me here, this is this is my piece here. I wanted to pick something that would encompass all of this. Carl Solomon was a, from uh, describes him, an intuitive Bronx Dadaist and a, and, a, and a writer like that. So in the poem, I'm going to read a song. It's all about love. I think it's utterly beautiful, and I don't see a trace of Dadaist in it. Um, so I wanted something that would all go with this, you know, kind of constellate Ginsberg's poem. And down here to go with this, you know, I have this uh, clay cordiform here, it's a rock hoop fire. And I have it resting on this stool, you know. Uh, this stool is from the Huichol in Mexico. This is the 
God's seat, you know, uh, Alcia de, de Liosa. Uh, so uh, that's what all this is doing here. And I'll do a PS up above. Okay. Song. The weight of the world is love. Under the burden of solitude, under the burden of dissatisfaction, the weight, the weight we carry is love. Who can deny? In dreams, it touches the body. In thought constructs, a miracle. In imagine, imagination, it anguishes until born in a human. Looks out of the heart, burning with purity, for the burden of life is love. But we carry the weight wearily, and so we must rest in the arms of love at last. We must rest in the arms of love. No rest without love, no sleep without dreams of love. Be mad or chill, obsessed with angels or machines. The final wish is love. It cannot be bitter, it cannot deny. Cannot withhold if denied. The weight is too heavy, must give for no return. As thought is given in solitude, in all the excellence of its excess, the warm bodies shine together in the darkness. The hand moves to the center of the flesh. The skin trembles in happiness, and the soul comes joyful to the eye. Yes, yes, that's what I wanted. I always wanted, I always wanted to return to the body where I was born. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> uh, I've, I've seen, you know, pieces of his last birthday and all that, and all of these fellows got together. Uh, rather recently, Michael McClure passed away. I think Gary Snyder is still living there up in Northwest Ridge, Yuba River, uh, in Ferlinghetti. Um, he was here in San Diego uh, several years ago first, and then he came not so many years ago, and we as the Celtic Ensemble played uh, for him at uh, San Diego State there. Uh, Michael McClure appeared once over in La Jolla. Uh, that's about what I know I can, that I can remember. Okay, but it, that's for Father's Day and the gay father of uh, all beat poets I right hear. Now I want to honor Juneteenth tomorrow. So can you focus up here at this? <clears throat> and uh, this is a Yoruba tray. It's a divining tray. And I selected this because I, th I think that it is the most fertile, the most potent symbol of West Africa, the Yoruba. You know, where Africa dips in that little curve in there, where that's right where the Yoruba was. And, and very ancient, very long-lasting, still vital civilization. And this is a divining tray that goes back centuries and centuries. Portrayed in it are the faces of Eso Eligva. He is like Coyote. He is a, like Coyote. He connects you know, the earth people with the other world people. Uh, he guards the ceremonies and the, the, the rituals. It also embodies the succession of many generations of diviners. They all know who, who they are. Uh, so we've had the Black Lives Matter, which really has made a difference. And now with, you know, now we can honor, you know, the Juneteenth. But I have this here as a very potent symbol for more to come because the root pulse of this culture is still vital. It's still going. You know, it still stems, you know, over here to the Americas, you know, to the Caribbeans, you know, to the people in this country. And this country needs it. It needs what comes through this. <laughs> 
And so this is just, you know, I'm being simple about it, but it's, it's to, to say it's a very important and fertile symbol for Africa, but for all of us. And that's the way I'm having it up here for Juneteenth. So thank you.